Have you ever heard a moth squeak like this? Just listen. It's a death's head hawk moth and these are one of my favourite moths to raise. I'm going to show you how I raise mine and explain about the mistakes I've made in the past. Firstly, you've got to find some eggs. You can usually order them online, although I find sometimes it can be pretty difficult to get hold of. Sometimes I'm lucky enough that my moths will breed and they'll lay eggs for me and I'll raise those and I much prefer that. When I first started raising them, I did used to say spray the eggs and that's because I'd read it in quite a few places when I first started. But recently I've learned that spraying the eggs can actually drown them, so I don't advise that no more. Keep the eggs in a small container, just open the lid daily. Eggs can hatch anywhere between five and 10 days. All depends on the temperature. You can keep the eggs room temperature but i tend to keep my near my catered enclosures and it does seem to be a bit warmer at around 24 degrees you can usually tell when the eggs are going to hatch because they start becoming see-through and sometimes you can even see the caterpillar wiggling inside once the caterpillars hatch they may not eat straight away and they might start wandering around the caterpillar sometimes eats the shell as they're hatching out and so they won't be hungry straight away i use a paintbrush to gently move them into a different tub and I'll add a small leaf in there and it's usually one of the younger leaves because sometimes the older leaves are a bit hard for them to chew, especially when they've just hatched. Sometimes I'll rip the leaves up a little bit as well. I like to add air holes into the tubs that I'm putting them in. This helps with ventilation and reduces the risk of a mould growth. The caterpillars will eat a variety of plants, but I like to use privet just because it's easier to get hold of. Just make sure you wash it thoroughly just because any pesticides that's been sprayed in a field nearby can actually travel through the air and land on certain leaves. And although I wash my leaves every time, um, I have had this happen to me before. The thing I've learned is to make sure you dry the leaves before you put them into a tub with the caterpillars. Make sure to clean them out daily because any frass can build up mold growth. Any kind of mold growth can be fatal to your caterpillars. The caterpillars will eat for around a week and then they'll molt. If you keep them at a higher temperature, they do tend to molt a bit faster. I like to keep the caterpillars in the room where it's about 24 degrees Celsius. I usually use cleaning roll at the bottom of the tub just because it makes cleaning out a lot quicker at this stage. And I'm always looking for signs of any possible illness or viruses in the container with them. I'll try and check the caterpillars and make sure they've not got any discoloration or something on there that they shouldn't be. It's a good sign to see frass at the bottom of the tub because it means they're eating and pooing properly. But before you chuck the cleaning roll away, just double check inside because sometimes they crawl underneath and you don't want to be throwing them away by accident. At this stage, they're so small and they do camouflage into the leaves pretty well, so you've got to be really careful. Another thing I look out for is things like this, brown patches around the caterpillars and the caterpillars going floppy, such as too much humidity or pesticides on the leaves can cause it. If you see any of these signs with your caterpillars, it's best to sterilise everything that you've used, move the healthy ones into a separate container or net and just make sure to try and find a different food source and wash the leaves as thoroughly as possible. Keep the environment as clean as you can, clean them out multiple times a day just to make sure. I've had this a few times and I've tried my best each time and it's so disappointing. As the caterpillars grow, they will molt, and on each molt, you tend to see more coloration come through. When they first hatch, they're like a pale yellow, and as they molt to L2, they become a little bit more green. As they continue to molt to L3 and 4, they do show more coloration, with some staying a pale green and some turning yellow. There's different color variations. If you look closely, you can see this one's about to shed its skin. You can usually tell because they look really plump and shiny. These caterpillars will shed or molt around five times until they're ready to pupate. This one's just freshly molted, and as you can see, is a vibrant yellow color with some blue stripes. The caterpillar's body triggers the molting process with a release of hormone. This sends a signal which lets the caterpillar know it's time to get rid of the exoskeleton and form a new one. The exoskeleton is formed beneath his old one. The caterpillar usually starts shedding from the head, which you can see here, the old exoskeleton splits open, typically along the back and the head region. The caterpillar then begins wriggling and pushing its body out of the old skin, exposing the fresh, soft, new exoskeleton underneath. This is such a delicate process and sometimes a caterpillar can get stuck in his shed, but the majority of them do shed successfully. It does take a while, but I have sped this footage up just to make it a little bit quick for the video.
time to shed the leaf behind the exoskeleton and as you can see this is the little head cap of the caterpillar i love how cool these look close up i can't believe this is actually the little head cap of a caterpillar i like to move the caterpillars into a net at around l3 just because it's got better ventilation and less chance that they're going to get a virus i put the privet into jam jars and i drill holes in the lid so i can just place the privet through and then the caterpillars don't drown Occasionally the caterpillars can turn brown and this one's just malted and as you can see it's going from a yellow to a brown. Look at the colour difference. All the caterpillars are different colours now, they do turn into the same moth when they hatch. These two are fully grown and ready to pupate soon. These caterpillars tend to have quite a quick life cycle and can pupate in as little as five weeks from hatching. If you keep them on the cooler side, they will grow a little bit slower and if you keep them on the warmer side, they can grow, grow a little bit faster. It's a quick look from when the caterpillar hatches right up until the pupate. When the caterpillar is ready to pupate, you can usually tell because you can see them wandering around the bottom of the enclosure. You'll notice the colour of them change a little bit to a, an orangey colour and they also look a little bit waxy too. These caterpillars like to burrow and pupate underground. They create a little chamber where they'll get ready for metamorphosis. I like to make sure there's a lid on the tubs that I'm putting them into because they do tend to wander around and you'll find they can climb out and just wander around your house, which I have actually had before. It's happened twice and the first time I must have left the lid off a little bit and it pushed it over, climbed out of the tub. It's best to have a lid on anyway though because it does stop the caterpillar from drying out because in this stage they'll evaporate the excess moisture and prepare to shed the skin. This doesn't happen straight away and can take around a week. It's best to leave the pupa underground for at least two weeks. During this stage, metamorphosis takes place. When the pupa's harden, they'll turn this red colour and that's when you know they're okay to dig up. Some people like to put caterpillars into a tub with bird nesting material. I've tried both techniques and both work just as well. Just make sure you don't keep them in an area that's too dry like near a radiator because they will dry out. The good thing about having them in these tubs and using the bird nesting material is I can really see through and watch the progress. When they're this yellow colour, they're not quite ready and they still need time to harden. But once they turn to a wine red colour, you know that they're safe to handle. After a couple of weeks and the moth starts getting ready to hatch, they start turning a really dark colour. You sometimes can see through the pupa as well and they start feeling quite baggy so this is when you know they're due to hatch any time now at this stage i like to put them into a medium sized pop-up net you can also try and sex them at this stage i like to use my phone and use the macro settings so i can zoom right in and see this one's male and this one's female i'll show you a side by side comparison I was lucky enough to see this moth hatch and for a healthy moth to hatch it doesn't take them that long this footage has been sped up but it usually takes around 30 seconds to a minute for them to actually hatch finally pushed his way out of the pupa casing he'll want to climb up and find somewhere safe to inflate and harden his wings this one was struggling with his grip for some reason so i'll give him a helping hand best to leave them off alone at this point so they can inflate and harden the wings safely and this moth took around 20 minutes for him to successfully inflate his wings i did leave him another 24 hours before i started to handle him though these are one of my favourite moths. If you just look how detailed his wings actually are and the beautiful colour, the patterns, just amazing. I'm handling the moth for the first time after he's hatched and as you can hear, they do make a squeaking noise. This noise is said to be mimicking a queen bee because these moths actually sneak into beehives and steal them off the bee's honey. I think it's possibly a defensive mechanism too. These moths are also well known for the striking skull pattern on his thorax. It's thought that the skull pattern may act as a form of defensive mimicry. The unusual and intimidating appearance can potentially deter predators. 
such as birds, by making the moth look more threatening or toxic than it actually is. It's also said that the skull marking may resemble the face of a queen bee. These moths are also able to mimic the scent of bees, so the skull-like marking may also serve as an additional form of visual deception or destruction inside of the beehive. Because these moths usually feed from beehives and we're not able to provide that, we do need to hand feed them. I like to buy honey from a local beekeeper. I use warm water and mix 50% honey, 50% water. Now at first this can be really tricky but once you get used to it, I promise you it does get a lot easier. I use a cocktail stick and unravel his proboscis. But when it's the moth's first time feeding, they're unsure what you're doing and so they do panic a little bit and they'll try and run away. On the second feed though, they do seem to settle a lot more and they'll let you feed them. I like to feed the moths when it's around dinner time because they're less active then. I'll take them straight out of the net. I'll hold them between my finger and my thumb. I avoid touching the wings, but as you can see, I'm holding his thorax, which is where the skull markings are. Once the moth realizes that you're actually feeding them and they taste the honey, they do settle and relax. The moths don't usually feed for long and you can usually tell when they're finished because they roll the proboscis back up. Then start vibrating his wings and this is him getting ready to fly off. What I do then is pick him up and put him straight back into his net. When you see them vibrating like this, they're actually warming the flight muscles up and they don't usually fly away straight away. They will be doing this for at least 30 seconds. Try and feed the moths every other day. And because these moths are able to feed, they will live for up to six weeks. Feeding them is my favorite part about raising these moths. I usually have four or five moths at one time and I keep them in an extra large net in my bedroom and they do keep me awake. But it's well worth it because these moths are one of the best moths you can probably raise. Let me know if you've raised these moths before and thank you for watching my video.